Hi everyone, welcome back to Glitz and Glitter. I have another clock mold to do. Yes, I thought this was so cute, so I had to get it. It's got a tree on there, and all the numbers are embedded in there, which is nice, so you don't have to mess around with the numbers on the clock when you're done. So, I'm gonna try something I haven't done. I got these makeup from Dollar Tree. And I know makeup is mica powder, and I don't have like natural colors. So I'm gonna use one of these makeup colors for the tree trunk and branches. And for like the numbers, this line, the outer edge. Then I'm going to treat these little fruits that are hanging off as apples. So I'm gonna be using my red wine, super fine glitter. And for the leaves, I'm going to combine two of the glitters that I have. One is lime and one is evergreen. So if I mix the two together, I might get a little bit of contrast in the leaves. So the glitter I'm going to do with UV resin and the rest of it I will do with regular resin because I don't want them to like intermingle when they're curing. So I want all of that cured before I move on. So I need to clean that with a little bit of tape and um, let me grab a few things and we'll get started. Of course I have glitter in all my molds, even though this one has never been used. So just grab a piece of tape and clean out your, I'm sure you guys do too if you're using glitter and I know you all do. It's going to be everywhere. All right, so I'm just going to use my resin by Let's Resin for this. And I only need a little tiny bit. We're gonna start with the red. I'm just gonna drop it in there and get it cured really quick. I think that's the best way to do this one. If any of you have any other suggestions, let me know so I can try it next time. I want this pretty saturated with glitter. Hopefully it'll cure. That's the only problem if it is. but I don't want to see any. I want it to look like a nice ripe apple. Don't want to do green apple because it'll blend in with the, the leaves. So let's just try one before I move on, make sure it's going to cure properly. Just grab my dotting tool and get it spread around. I don't see why it wouldn't. And I'm thinking about the back color. Um, maybe black with my black resin. Not quite sure yet. But I think everything would pop if it was black. Oh, it's pulling back. That just means there's not enough in there. So if it's, yeah, if it's pulling back, just add a little bit more resin. And then quick, get your light on so it starts the process of curing it while you're waiting. A good idea while you're waiting for your resin to cure under your light and you have resin out, stick it on top because a lot of times if it's sitting to the side, it's still going to cure. I've done it multiple times, so I've learned to just stick my resin right on top of the light. That way it's not curing at the same time. So let's see how this is doing. Oh, it worked, it worked fabulous. So I'm just going to get all these red ones filled in and cure them all at once. Went right through that glitter. There's not that many apples, but there are four or five of them. I didn't even realize that until I was picking colors for the video. And I'm like, what are those round things? Oh, we have some fruit today. That one's a little thick. I don't know that I'll be getting it out of that one, but I 
think that's all of them. I'm sure. Oh, no, I see a little one right there. Let me put this down. Like, I'm sure you guys probably see one that I don't see. That usually is what happens. You're all yelling at the TV. All right. I think that's all of them. If not, I'll find it later. Let me get this going. And then we're going to work on the, the leaves. So I think what I'll do is start mixing up my resin for the, the leaves while I'm waiting. Now we'll need more than what I used for the apples, so. And if you make too much, you can always use it in like little pendants or something. I'm looking for all my sticks. Oh, they're right here, right in front of me. So I just want like a mixture of the two greens, like I said, so they don't look so fake, even though who's seen Who's seen glittery leaves? I think that looks pretty. Maybe a little bit more light one of the lime. I'll test one before I put it in all of them to see if the UV light will penetrate all this green too. If it did the red, I don't see why it won't do the green. All right, leave that on there and I'll be right back. All right, everything looks good. Let me try one of the leaves and um, if it works, we'll just move on. I think there's a string in this. Don't get out of the lines or you're going to see that on your finished project. So you can go back and clean anything off that you don't like before you pour your backing. I just want to wipe that off before I, before I cure it. All right, let's see if that's gonna work. If it does, I will go ahead and fast forward all of those leaves so you don't have to sit and be bored to death. All right, it worked. Hear that? Solid as a rock. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this fast forward and start working on all these leaves. So sit back and enjoy. I hope you like the music because some of you don't but I cannot let you sit there in silence. I just can't do it. So I hope you like it.
All right, all of that is done in curing. I'm just leaving it on longer since I'm going to be mixing up some resin. I mixed up one ounce of my Fast Cure, my four hour. And I think I was looking at these. Oh, they're not even open yet. I don't think they're open. I think I'm gonna mix a couple colors together for the tree trunk. Save that for mica powders. I think I'm gonna mix like some of this, this shiny one. I'm just gonna bust it up a little bit and put it in my cup. You can even make your own pigment paste out of these if you want to, but I don't have any extra part A or part B laying around to do that, or I would do that. Let me see what this one looks like. Hmm. Maybe I don't like it. I wanted it darker. Let me add another color to that. Plus it's got like little bits in there. So you have to make sure it mixes really well. I'm not sure I'm gonna like this. Maybe I'll just grab my regular. Uh, let me check this one. You'll put a little bit of this darker one in. I probably should be grinding it up first. It's probably why I have little bits and pieces in there. If I don't like it, I'm gonna add my brown mica powder to it. I mean, that's what makeup is anyway. It's mica powder, but it's been pressed. So I think the best thing to do with that stuff is just to make pigment paste, because look at the little bits and pieces on my stick. So I'm gonna grab my brown, I think. I like the shimmer in it, which you probably can't see. And even little bits might look natural in a tree, actually. But I'm gonna go grab some, some brown. All right, I'm just gonna use my regular brown. I'm just gonna add it to this color just a little bit, just to see if I can get rid of those little chunks. I don't even mind the different colors because that's a tree trunk. That's pretty. Let me get this out of the way. I made two pendants with the extra. So I'm basically going to drizzle it, not drizzle it, I'm going to be putting it in just like I put in the green and the red. And I do need something really, really thin because some of those branches are really tiny. Try to find a super tiny one here. If you get resin on them, just rake it off with your knife and get it all nice and clean. So for the trunk, yeah, I can just pour a little bit in there and spread it around, but all the little branches, not so much. And again, I will fast forward this for you so you're not bored to death.
All right, you guys, that took a while. So one thing I want to let you know, mix up half your resin at a time, measure your mica powder so you can get perfect colors because it took me longer and this is really sticky now. Like it's like really thick and I couldn't drip it anymore. So by the end of the half of this outer edge, it was really, really hard to put in. Otherwise it went in pretty well. It just takes time and patience. And then I used my little um, micro brush with alcohol and I just got the parts where I had to go out of the lines because it was too sticky. So again, this is my four hour fast cure. I'm thinking about what to back it with. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do yet. So I guess I'll surprise you. Be back in a sec. All right, it's cured. I had it on the heat mat about an hour. But like I said, this was so sticky by the time I finished putting it in, it was halfway cured because it took me so long. Um, I kept contemplating what to do on the back. I know I said black, but I'm not sure you're gonna see the brown with a back, black background. And then I thought maybe white, but white was kind of boring for me. So I decided glitter. My favorite glitter, heaven, my opal glitter. I'm going to douse it with glitter and see how that will, looks. Because I want to be able to see the brown and the green and the red. And I don't want it to be like washed out with black. So I'm just going to start draining this. I don't know how much this mold holds. I forgot to measure it. So I mix up six ounces of resin. If I need more, I'll just mix up more. Or it doesn't even have to go to the end. It doesn't really make a difference how thick it is. As long as it's cured solid, then it doesn't really matter that it doesn't come to the edge of the mold. So I am going to put a ton of my opal glitter in here. And it will sink, which is fine because then you'll get even more iridescence on the back of the, the, the piece. I don't really need it to float for any reason because we're not going to be looking through the side of it. I'm using my casting resin for this. I didn't use my, my four hour cure because I am running low and I don't want to use that much of it right now because I might need it for something. Put some more in there. Oh, that's going to be pretty. I hope it's going to be pretty. If you were backing this, what color would you back it in? That is my question of the day. That's what I should start doing. I will have a question of the day. And that is today's question. If you did these colors, what would you have backed this in? I would love to know. I mean, it's not quite as thick as I want it in glitter. However, before I use all this, it is gonna sink. So it'll probably be fine. So let's get this port in. I need to move this out of the way. I always drain this in there so I can get every last drop that I can get. Let's see what, oh, this, oh, I think this is going to be pretty. Well, it's definitely going to hold the six, and my guess is it's going to hold more. Probably, yeah, I should probably mix more up, because that barely covered. I'm going to say it's going to hold six more. So I will mix it up off camera, let it cure, and we will come back when it's cured. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. BRB. It is done, you guys. I'm so excited. Are you ready to see? Obviously, we could see through the back. The glitter all sank like I knew that it would. That's why I wasn't too concerned. I didn't want to do the glue trick on it because there's no reason to have it suspended in this. So that's that's okay. So let's get this out of the mold and see what we're working with. Hopefully all my numbers stay in place 
in all of my leaves. This is a little warm still because I can't wait. You know I can't wait. So it's kind of bendy. It came out of the mold okay. Look at that, it's perfect. I could do it again and again and again. A little bit of trimming, but no big deal. Are we ready? Ooh. Okay, so it is not shiny, but I know how to fix that. So we are going to have to top coat this and it will come out stunning. That's because this is not shiny. This part is, and this part is not, and I completely forgot I have another mold like that. My cross mold is just like that. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna keep this pressed down for a few minutes to keep it flat. What we're going to do is mix up a little resin. There's one little hole right there, but it doesn't go all the way through, so the resin will fill that in. Other than that, look at the glitter. And I think, I think, I think, I don't want to top coat over all that. So I'm going to, another tedious job. I'm going to try to stay in the lines. And that is going to be rough, but I'm going to do it. Let me get a little bit of resin mix up. So I don't need it on a mat or anything tonight. It's already really late. I'm just going to mix up, um... I don't know, maybe about an ounce. We'll start with an ounce of my casting resin and get it on there so it can cure for tomorrow morning. Now that I have one little ounce mixed up, I'm probably gonna need more than that, but I just wanna show you that it will come back to life. And if it's too tedious, I may end up just covering the whole thing. I don't want to. But the sparkle will come back when the resin is on. Not as much as I want it to, I see. I wonder why it has a brown tint to it. I wonder if it's because I have brown next to it. But at least it will be shiny, but it's not the opal I was going for. Now that I used a ton of that opal glitter in here. So yeah, I will get this sped up for you. I don't know, can you see the difference? Probably not from right there. I don't know. Let me get this all done and uh, cured and maybe you'll be able to see it better. So as you saw very early on, I just wiped it all over because there was no way it was ever going to stay in those grooves. So I didn't want to do it, but I had to. Um, I don't love it. I don't know why my opal glitter isn't opal anymore. Other than the finish on the mold did something because that's the only thing that's different. Normally I get my opal. I don't hate it, but I, it's not what I had in my head. Um, well, we'll see what happens when I can handle it tomorrow. All right, everything is dry. So there is a couple things. I'm sure you guys probably can't tell, but the resin kind of repelled in a few spots. So in order to fix that, like very tiny little spots, I am just going to take my UV resin and I'm going to rub some over the spots that need to be fixed, like right here. Needs a little bit of resin. So just rub it over the spots that are not shiny to match the rest. Make sure there's no fingerprints in it once you're done. 
and then put your UV light on there just to get that cured and then you won't have to go over this whole entire thing again or whatever you're working on. A little bit right there. I'm going to do this in sections and um, I'm just going to get all of it done because I don't want it to be like not shiny in, in a particular spot, especially if somebody ends up with this. And it's only going to take a couple minutes. All right, I am done with the UV resin. Everything is good. Everything is covered. So the next thing is when I lift this up and you look through it, you could see behind it, which means you can see the motor piece that's going behind it. So two options I'm going to go, and I'm going to try the easiest first. I'm going to spray paint this with a white spray paint. If you could still see through that, then I'm going to go over the back with white resin because I don't want to be able to see the motor through there. So I'm going to go spray paint this. Let me see what happens. I will let you know. And if it's good, we'll just move on and get everything installed because I have the hands ready. I've got the motor ready. I'm ready to assemble this thing. So let's see which one will work. All right. So I did spray paint the back white and it's fine. I spray painted it and then I put a clear seal on it. So it should be good. And it didn't really change anything about it. You can't see through it, which is good. That's what I wanted. But, you know, I'm not happy with the, the color of the opal flakes. I still can't figure out what the heck happened. Because any other time that I shined it up like that, it worked. So, whatever. Live and learn, right? So, we're going to put this together. I've never put one together on camera before. So, that's what we're going to do today. So, you just buy these little motors... I got these at Hobby Lobby, and this one is a wall hanger, which is what this is for. And you put that little piece right here. And this piece is where the battery is and where you set the clock, which goes right here. So once that is in place, well, before you do that, you're supposed to put a little washer on. Not a washer. I don't really know what these things are called. This little black rubber piece goes right there. And then you put this on here. Now make sure the hole fits in the hole or you're gonna have to drill your hole out. And also make sure that the hanger part is facing towards your 12. I'm not sure my hole is drilled out enough. Oh, I know what it is, it's the hanger part. Let me see if I could still get this. No, I'm not going to be able to get this together. I'm going to have to. Let me see if I can get it together without this thing. Because Don is not home to drill me out a longer hold. These things come in longer pieces. So these are the threads that you're going to need for your nut and your bolt. So your threads have to come through the face of your clock. They sell these much longer. And they can come out to here. However, today at my local Hobby Lobby, they were all gone. I don't know who's making so many clocks, but they have not put any extra pieces out on the floor. So mine is not yet coming through. Let me see if that's just holding it back. So I still don't have enough thread. Going to have to gonna have to get a longer one. Gonna have to get a longer one, you guys. So I will be back with a longer one in one sec. Okay, so I went through my stash and I only had one longer one left. So as you can see, the threads are sticking out right here. And my hanger is pointing towards the 12. Now that that's on, you're going to take your little washer, this little thing, put it right there, take this little nut and screw it on here. Hi, Mr. Glitz. What you working on? 
I'm trying to put a clock together by myself. Are you proud of me? I'm always proud of you. No, you're not. Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh, what's that? Uh-oh. So let me, let me see if I have it right before you walk away. So that faces the 12. The little rubber thing goes behind there. The washer and the nut go on there. And then the hour hand goes on first. And you push it down until it doesn't go down anymore. Then the minute hand. Oh, and by the way, these things come with little plastic covers, so if it looks dull, it is dull. So you gotta pull the covers off. Then the minute hand. Oh, no. Baby, I just don't have time for this. Why? <laughs> Get it? Oh. oh, okay, good. Minute hand goes there. <laughs> He's so funny. But it's not... I'm wondering if I need the second hand. My minute hand is loose. Why? It won't push down. Where's this little nut washer go? Oh, I don't know. Help! I can't get it. He came home at exactly the right time. I don't... Oh, wait, maybe that go... No, that doesn't go there. Well, this goes on next, but I can't get it to click in. I thought the minute hand went on first. No, look, the shape of this one is different than the shape of that one's round. This one fits over this perfectly, but it's not snapping in. I wonder if it's the wrong brand. Crisis averted. So underneath this second hand that he just put on, there's a little, the little tiny, tiny nut Get screwed on there, and that holds your, your your minute hand up so it's not flopping against your clock. And then you just poke your little second hand in and click it right in the center. He went to go get me a battery so we could see how this is going to work, but I see I don't have it tight enough. I don't have the proper tools, but we're going to go with, with this. Tighten that nut good enough. That way your hanger isn't moving and you can change your clock as needed. And tighten that one as well that's holding your minute hand. Here he comes with my battery. Here I come to save the day. He came home exactly the right time or I would have been frustrated. See, I knew that. That's why I came home, so oh. I could help you. Okay. Let's listen. It works. And there she is. All done. There she is to save the day. <laughs> All right, you guys. <laughs> it is available as a demo. Let me know if you want it. Otherwise, it's going in the closet with the rest of my demos. I will see you guys tomorrow. Stay tuned. I got a couple pictures for you. Have a blessed day. Bye.